Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo. We're down in Tennessee on an adventure today to pick up one of the coolest cars ever. I've managed to buy like maybe the most legendary proper street racing icon of all time. I have wanted one of these cars for a long time. Uh, my buddy Matt Hogan hit me up and was like, hey, I'm trying to unload a couple cars. He is a dude who's buying and selling 20 cars a month. It's wild. Posted this up on his Instagram and I had to get my hands on it. And we're gonna go pick it up. We're down in Bristol, Tennessee, um, and I cannot wait to see this thing. Oh, and we're pulling into the uh, Bristol Motor Speedway because I'm about to race the Bristol 1000. Cletus's Crown Vic Bonanza race on the legendary Bristol Short Track. I'm so excited. So it's gonna be a big, big weekend. Please take a second and go over to the Stay Tuned merch store. We've got a rack of shirts from the original Stay Tuned shirt, Angelo's Gym. We're going to lose the shop, and there's lots of stickers, too. Oh, yeah, sure. Here we are. Holy <laughs> Wow, there it is. Holy heck. Look at that. Today's the day, baby. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm getting my hands on a 1955 two-door Chevy. I'm super pumped. These cars are the coolest. One of, you know, let's get out there and deal with it first. Can't even drive straight. I can't drive straight. You're messing me up. Cool, this is it. So it's a 210 post scoop. Yep. It is a 1955 Chevy. I have wanted one of these for a long time. Obviously, Finnegan's car blasphemy, hugely inspirational, changed my life. We took that car out on Drag Week a few times. And after being in and just sitting in one of these things, it's just like an absolute time machine. I got cars in the 60s and 70s and whatever. If you sit in a Tri-5 Chevy, you will feel like it's the 50s all over again. The view, the window curve, how big it is, the dash, it's incredible. It's the most transformative car I've ever been in. And it's, you know, American graffiti and Tulane blacktop and Finnegan's blasphemy and so many rad cars. They are just so cool. Barb's dad's got a sick one I rode in a couple months ago. I was like, man, I, I sure as hell want one of these things. Let's dig into it. So I just was on Marketplace. It's not even always like, it's not even always like, oh, this is a super cool, like very clear muscle car, hot rod, whatever. Sometimes you'd be like, yeah, I bought a 90s Blazer. Like it was super sure nice, enough. good deal. I bought it, boom, yeah. I had to get it. And everyone, I'm like, damn, that is a good deal. Like that was a good scoop. But yeah, this thing looks awesome. Do you have any history on the car? Any ideas? So it's been in a drag car since the 70s. Yeah. Uh, it's got the 12 volt a lot of bar. It's all old school. It's, uh, it would make a killer gasser. Yeah. Uh, straight axle front end or like the two lane car with the drop leaf bone. Yeah. Uh, pull over setup in the front. Uh, I had vision for, you know, tunnel ram and fender well headers and a crash box Muncie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it would be going that way if it hadn't been for my buddy. And He's probably still going to be going that way. Man. I wouldn't feel too bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Very cool, man. I want to dig into it. Yep. There is a boatload of parts in there and just tons and tons. All right. A little floor repair needed, but besides yep. that, yep. real solid. But it's super, got super. pleated sun visors. 
does have that. Oh. Probably like a street strip car. Yeah. From the mid 70s until the late 80s. And you said you pulled out of a barn where it's been sitting since 88. Sitting since 88. Yeah. It was a small block, high RPM. Was it four speed then? It was a four speed then. Yeah. And then when they, uh, they were going to try to put it back on the strip for a street, and the guy had a, a turbo 400 he was going to put in it, so he pulled the original clutch pedal simply out, put a regular one back in it. Yeah. So, but it really needs to be a proper four speed. Oh, those things, so. for sure. But, I have a Muncie, or I have M22, I'm going to put in it. Yeah. Can't be a right pressure. Yeah. Serious gears in the back and everything. So. Yeah, every geared a little bit. Yeah, might need to go down to like 488s or something. Sure. <laughs> Maybe 410s. <four> we'll <laughs> be good. All right, cool, man. Yeah. All right, you want to get loaded up? We got to yeah. get some things here. into the tunnel we got the 55 loaded up we don't need it for anything but i want to keep my hands on it because 65 people already tried to buy it uh and i'm gonna we're gonna get into this legendary nascar track what's up man i figured that was you you said you were buying a car yeah, you need me. to come sign in right here all your guys can i leave this here holy hell i thought it was a tunnel it's not a tunnel fellas no Stop. We just came down the bank, which is gnarly. I think it's 28 degrees. This is it. We're in one of NASCAR's gnarliest coliseums. I'm just super pumped, man, just to be here. I guess, should we go around that way? We think it's sick. It's the main day, it's Sunday, Bristol 1000. It feels wild to be in here. I, you know, I've done a bit of racing in my time, but I've never been to this track and I haven't really done much oval type stuff, except for being sideways on some bank so I'm excited about it. about walking out on a racetrack first time it doesn't matter if you're driving a crown victoria or you know a half million dollar stock car whatever it is it's wild all right we are in the bristol short track it's incredible it's, the seats go straight up it's like a legit coliseum it's wild in here i'm super pumped this is my crown victoria if you don't know cletus has like three million Crown Victorias. We got 30 of them out here right now. We're gonna go race wheel to wheel with a bunch of other lunatics. Matt Field is here, Formula D killer. Uh, Connor Daly, an IndyCar driver. Finnegan is here. Derek from Vice Grip. Obviously, Cletus is running. Uh, there's a bunch of absolute killers. I'm super excited. Uh, this is my car, old number 96. Um, I run 
I'm the number 96. One of my best buddies died racing motocross years ago, right before I started to drift racing. Uh, my buddy Russ, and he was 196, so you know the freedom. So I run, I've been running 96 my whole little racing career, and uh, I'm excited. This thing looks cool. It's got a wing on her. It's got a 10 pound bottle of nitrous in it, and the idea is, I think, it's 100 laps. Just survive for about the first 85, and then hammer down and try to find a position. I'm excited. I'm gonna sit in it. They have updated and upgraded safety stuff immensely. nitrous button so I'm ready to rock at full capacity and we are stoked in qualifying I'm just gonna try to survive it wind up somewhere in the middle not too bad not too insane and make sure we make it to the big event I was coming, I was like, so I wasn't throwing it in full speed right at the beginning of the turn, but I was a little wonky on it. It folds in good. It's harder to see than you think, man. It's such a crazy bend. And we didn't do a great job of spreading out, but I think I got something, something in there. No, yeah. We'll see. Just, I forgot about the nitrous entirely. Like the tire, and I was like, okay. So it'll be pretty gnarly. Let's get into pack. Where you want to be is like not even remotely where you are. Yeah, I know. You can't see. I'm like, okay, here's where I am. I'm like, I wonder where the clear exists. I'm like, I'm never going to see it. It's wild. Just keep your eyes forward. That's all good. I was just like, you know, let me, let me, try, let me feel it for a second. Apparently, you get to stay in it across the whole thing. I believe it. I believe it. Isn't that wild? The bag? Yeah. It's so cool. It's awesome. I did my qualifying runs. Um, I'm still getting, you know, I didn't get my brain wrapped around this thing yet, so I was I was letting off and having the brakes coming into the bank turn a couple times. And I completely don't need to. Like, you can just run this thing pretty flat out, a little stab of the brakes if you're flying it, but I think I go a bit quicker. I wasn't worried about going 10 tenths. Uh, I just want to, like, get in there and see what it's like and have fun. But I get out of it. It cuts 80 laps, so I don't want to biff it or do anything. I want to make sure the car works. But it's there, man. It's good that you can definitely, you can definitely fold that thing into the bank. The bank is so steep. I haven't been on the bank side like this in a long time because it's like all you can see is the segment in front of you because the rest of it's where you're going is like behind you, basically. So it's pretty wild. Let's go, Tony! Tony Angelo. Who knows Tony Angelo out there? What are you doing about that? I just sort of get the way to land. You know, I'm going to get a nice look at the whole field. Smart, 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 bad, good strategy. Uh, any other strategy? Yeah, I mean, he just was, was not pushing hard enough into the turns. I was running along and he hit the brakes. I'm just gonna come in hot. I think the idea is, as you said, the guy's gonna like, can't win on the first for that, and then win the second one. Let's all get to that 75 turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna start trying to run the race a lot of safety. 
You know, it was a long time to survive, especially if you want to be on the same track track. So, all right, Tony, I'm going to see you here. We'll see you out there. Thank you, Tony. 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 Ready to rock. Starting towards the back. Um, you know, that's all right. I can feel for it. I know I'm not pushing that hard yet. Get out there, send this thing into those turns hot. Make sure it sticks and just find the right line around all these lunatics. This is a legendary track. I'm thrilled just to be here, man. It's awesome, but I do want to. I do want to go. Nitrous right, buttons right here. That's my best friend. I'm gonna strap down extra tight. What a sight to see some of the best uh, social media influencers and car enthusiasts from around the country getting ready to rip around this famed half mile oval, the Concrete Palace, the last great Coliseum. They call it Thunder Valley. It's Bristol Motor Speedway. It's and Bristol, baby. We're coming to green this time. 1,000 underway. We are green in Bristol. Let's get it, boys. Already fanning out three wide down the front straightaway and into turn one. Down the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah. Oh, just me and Matt Field trying to hunt down some Daytona 500 racer. Woo! Winner, probably. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. All right, I think we moved up ten spots, so that. It's basically just about to seize up. I'm sick. 
Yeah, the guy on the on the last speaker, he goes, yo, Tony Angelo is driving the fucking wheels off of that car. He's like, he's picking up spots left and right. I passed like 17 fucking cars, dog. That was incredible. Yo, I got to mix it up with like an Indy car driver, like hard, for like 10 laps. We're gonna check and make sure that all of our drivers are okay. It is your fault. I love these cars. As a kid, I didn't care about anything before 67. It did not enter my brain. I was like, those old things, I don't know what they are. They're all weird. I don't care about them. And then the weirdest thing is obviously Finnegan has the raddest Tri-5 ever, Blasphemy, which we have spent forever working on yes. and driving around in and winning Drag Week, no big deal in it. Uh, but you know what's really funny is the time that I got into one of these cars and I was like, this is the great, these are like magical cars. Remember when we were trying to do I think it was Stubby Bob in Fresno and somebody picked us up in there. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the first time I hadn't been in Blasphemy yet. Yeah. I don't even know if I'd seen it yet and we got into that thing and I was like yeah. sat in the back. It was like a dude who came to help us find parts. He had some weird I just remember being in there. Check, check. Glass. Check. Glass. Check. Check. Glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like this is yeah. so yeah. I get it. I, that moment I got it and then obviously I saw your car. I was like, okay, it's super nasty. It's blast me is legitimately one of the coolest cars ever. It's a masterpiece. It's awesome. So it's 55 210 post. It was like a drag street strip car, probably mid 70s to late 80s. All right. And Matt said he got it out of a barn. It's been sitting since 88. But it's definitely like it's got ladder bars and a 12 bolt. It was a four speed car. It's got a little cage in it. It's cleaner than mine was when I got it. They're just so old, man. Like to find it in this condition, I was yeah. like, "All right, I'm in." Yeah, this is like mine had a quarter panel grafted on here poorly on top of the old one. The floor was buckled from where it got rear-ended. The floors were shot. Like it needed, well, it needed everything. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this is solid. And what's now? By the time I saw your car, it was already it was pretty legit because you did all that stuff on roadkill, and I wasn't like. Involved in the project, and I was like, Oh, dude, you already got a chrome diff cover. Yeah, that's hey, where it's she, at. She's a race car. Yeah, JC Whitney, right oh, there, dog. Just gonna oh, make God. it fly. Dude. It's got leaf springs and ladder bars, so I'm ahead of the game. Yeah, my, remember uh, my Firebird had that too. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting suspension setup, but it actually worked. Okay. Like, my Firebird hooked and looked like it, it went straight. Yeah. So, what kind of look are we going for? What are I we, mean, what I, are we think, here? I think I want like stripped down, super fun, just like. Kind of ratty, like two lane blacktop inspired, yeah. kind of that vibe. I want to call it quick and dirty. I think. I like it. I yeah. like it. Um, two lane blacktop, best worst movie ever made. Yeah. Just minutes of no dialogue. It's so weird. Just ends so in noise. awkward. It's, yeah. It's so awkward. But yeah, and I don't know, like, you think I can make a pretty decent car keeping the stock frame and stuff? You have a full chassis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the stock frame. Is it a California frame or is it boxed? I don't know. There's two frames in the California car. They're boxed. It's boxed. Is it open or I can't see? It doesn't look open anywhere up here. It's boxed. Oh yeah, it's boxed everywhere. Is that the is that the differentiating factor? I yeah. Know, wagon frames are boxed, right? I don't know, but there's a California frame and. There's the other one, and the California one, I think, is supposed to be boxed. This is boxed. Stronger. And my R56 yeah. was not originally, I don't think. And I like postcards. They're supposed to be stronger. Yeah. 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 This thing is great. It's pretty cool, right? Hell yeah. Um, it already has a great look. Like, I like it. I feel like you can't get rid of the wheels. The wheels are wild. Yeah, I'm like, I would never do it, but I could be probably convinced to keep them around for a while. Yeah. At least I feel the, like they're supposed the front, to be supposed know? that screw into the center cap. Some should go here. <laughs> Something that's well, not that like weird. It's a spoke thing that goes right into here, bolting in. 
Yeah, yeah. I love the way it looks. I love your idea. I have lots of leftover stuff. Bar, I'm yeah. listening. Like if you need like a trunk <laughs> lid that's lightweight and will fly through the air, I got that. Perfect. I got window that's pre-scratched. That's because that's floating through the air. Like I got stuff. Nice. I got stuff. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, you want to come work on it? Hell yeah, I do. All right. Let's go build a car. Let's do it. Yeah, I have. Oh, dude, you want to buy wheels? I got some. You got some stuff. I got. I, well, like out of that barn. I yeah, bought, I bought all those Pro Street wheels and tires. Like, I, I still got some left. Yeah. yeah, I think I got some center lines, welds, super tricks. Like, yeah, dude. I bought it because I was like, man, I always wanted one. It popped up. Man, it was like a habit, and it's like just such a good starting point. Yeah, it's like cars, man. When you get into like two days or three weeks of rust repair and trying to make it straight. Man. I could probably build some parts on this thing pretty quickly. Oh, as yeah. As long as you don't want to make it straight. You know, as long as you don't want to make it perfect. Like, you could be the drag strip next weekend of this thing. That's what I mean. Exactly. Yeah. I like the brown bomber. Yeah. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm stoked. We just landed back in Pennsylvania with my brand new 55 Chevy I bought off my buddy Matt. Uh, the Bristol weekend was insane. The Bristol 1000 is an incredible race. I was so stoked just to be on that legendary NASCAR track with all those maniacs. Super fun to be able to drive really hard on track for the first time in a long time. I had an absolute blast, but now let's focus on this car. We did the long trek back up to Pennsylvania yesterday. Pretty much smooth sailing. Stopped off for some, for some Dodge parts we'll talk about later. Um, and just cruising, cruising, cruising. Took us like, you know, 10 hours or something all said and done, but we're here. We've got the 55 at our storage shop, our second just storage location. And I'm gonna give it a quick once over. I'm so pumped. I've wanted to try five Chevy forever. If I'm being honest, my list goes 55 is number one, then 57, then 56, but I would take any of them. I love all of them, man. Uh, and I'm, you know, I haven't really even had a minute because we just had that crazy, full bore blast up and back to look through here but i'm seeing control arms some lower control i see clutch pedal and brake pedal for a four speed which is huge we're definitely going to make this car a four you know five speed it's going to be manual one way or another uh, i'm just looking at the kind of stuff that got sort of collected over the years i see quarter glass i see door glass Interior uh, a trim, bunch of for trims. The windows. Yeah, I don't know how much we'll put together. Obviously, I want to keep this like a stripped down racer that I can drive on the street, just kind of the way it always was. And, and not too far off from what it looks like right now. It's just so cool the way it is. Will I run a hood? I don't know. Will I run a rear bumper? I don't know yet. Um, but man, it's just wicked cool. I'm so stoked to get rocking. We're going to put it away for now. You heard Mike Finnegan. He says he's going to come up and help me build this thing over the winter, but it is just one of the all-time iconic radical hot worlds and uh i am now i'm now lucky enough to have one and i'm, I'm super pumped and that's it for this episode of stay tuned we've got a bunch of crazy episodes coming up we're working on the 440 we've got the cyclone coming back there's gonna be some road trips some adventure stuff and uh thanks for watching please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time